Did you know that there is no mastoid process at birth? Well, this develops later in life in response to the pull of the stenocleidomastoid muscle as the baby moves their head. Welcome to AMT. And if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and hit the notifications button so that you can be notified when you upload a new video. It often happens that medical students read about the whole head and neck anatomy, but they tend to forget one specific area, which is the neonatal skull. And they are often caught unaware by the examiners when they bring the whole stem or even two full of the neonatal skull. So today we are going to focus on the neonatal skull. We will look at the sutures uh, in an adult and then we will also look at how they develop. We will look at the fontanelles and their function. And we will also mention a few clinical aspects of the neonatal skull. So let's draw an adult skull as we look at it uh, from the top. We've got a suture that crosses here. Um, this is the frontal bone. And then we have got another suture that crosses here, separating the two parietal bones from each other. And then we have got another suture here, separating the two parietal bones from the occipital bone posteriorly. Such that the suture separating the frontal bone from the two parietal bones is called the coronal suture. So the coronal suture and the coronavirus have got something in common in that they both resemble a crown. Uh, we have got a suture here separating the two parietal bones from each other. We call it the sagittal suture. And the suture that separates the two parietal bones from the occipital is called the lambdoid suture. There is a suture that I want to indicate here. Although it's impossible for you to see it from the top like I am doing, we see this suture on the lateral aspect. Um, it separates the temporal bone from the parietal bones. And this suture is called the squamomastoid suture. There are so many other sutures that you can see in a human skull, but today we want to focus on the neonatal skull and how these sutures develop. So we are now going to move to a neonatal skull and where the fontanelles are found. So most of the bones at birth are ossified, but the process is incomplete and it leaves gaps in between the bones of the skull and we call these fontanelles. So here I'm going to draw the neonatal skull. We've got this frontal bone separated into two halves by the frontal suture and then from there we've got this coronal suture separating the frontal from the parietal bones and then the sagittal suture separating the two parietal bones and then the lambdoid suture separating the parietal bones from the occipital so the gaps in between are covered by a membrane and these gaps are called the fontanelles so the first one here is what we call the anterior fontanelle. And then on the posterior aspect, in between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone, we have got the posterior fontanelle. So these two fontanelles are the ones of major clinical significance in pediatrics. Uh, the anterior fontanelle is diamond-shaped. And this one closes 18 months after birth. And it is bound in between the frontal and the coronal bones. Uh, the posterior fontanelle is triangular in shape. Its base is posterior and its apex is anterior. Then it closes at the end of the first year. It is usually closed and it is found uh, in between the lambdoid suture and the sagittal suture. So as I have said before, the neonatal skull has got a total of six fontanelles 
So let's just mention the names of the other four fontanelles. Uh, here is the anterior fontanel. There is the posterior fontanel. Here is the sphenoid fontanel. And there is the mastoid fontanel. Uh, the sphenoid and the mastoid fontanels are paired, meaning to say we've got two the other side. There is something I want to mention about the sphenoid, uh, sphenoid fontanel. It is found in between four bones, which are the frontal, the parietal, the sphenoid, and the temporal. So when these fuse, they form what is called the terion. And terion is um, sort of H-shaped, but it is of clinical significance in adults, in that the it is the weakest part of the skull to the extent that even a blow by a fist can can damage it and uh, it risks the rupture of the middle meningeal artery that runs just underneath so consequently a, any traumatic blow to the terion may rupture the middle meningeal artery causing epidural hematoma which can be very fatal so let me quickly take you through the functions of the fontanelles in pediatrics during birth the skull needs to be molded in a way that it can be able to squeeze through the pathway of the mother and this is made possible by the fontanelles the fontanelles also allow rapid stretching of the brain as it begins to grow and it can also accommodate increase in cerebrospinal fluid for example in a condition called hydrocephalus however in some conditions the skull fails to grow or to develop for example in cleidocranial dysplasia the skull fails to grow so in pediatrics the anterior fontanel is used to assess the hydration status of a baby. Uh, the physician can palpate the anterior fontanel. So if the membrane is depressed below the surface, it's indicative of dehydration. If it's bulged above the surface, it's indicative of an increase in the, in the intracranial pressure. For example, there might be overload of the cerebrospinal fluid, which can lead to a condition called hydrocephalus. Let's say we want samples of the cerebrospinal fluid. A needle can be passed uh, through the anterior fontanel into the subarachnoid space to obtain samples of the CSF. Let me just give uh, exam tips for the people who would want to write an exam. Um, they often ask about the way of ossification for certain bones. So I just want you to know that the bones of the vault ossify by intramembranous ossification and those of the base ossify by endochondral ossification. So intramembranous ossification is the process of bone development from fibrous membranes. So actually the mode of the bone is made by the fibrous membranes which are then later uh, replaced by bone deposition. And then what is called endochondral ossification is the process of bone development from hyaline cartilage. So the model is formed by hyaline cartilage, which will later be de uh, deposited, dis replaced by the bone. So there's this statement that I want you to remember. I call it the golden statement. Uh, it says that all the bones in the body, except for the flat bones of the skull, the mandible, and the clavicles are formed from endochondral ossification. Please repeat this statement and make sure that you memorize it. It will help you in any region of anatomy. And that's it folks for the sutures of the skull, the fontanels and features of the neonatal skull. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe to this channel and like the video. Please don't forget to like my Facebook page annotated medical tutorials. See you soon.